Hi, I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Let's go to the Sally Show. It's said that a condition called spasmodic dysphonia is incurable. The entire medical profession worldwide says so. It says so on its websites worldwide. My field, the American Speech Hearing Language Association, says there are no cures of spasmodic dysphonia. The drug company, Allegan, the maker of Botox, guarantees with the others that there are no cures of spasmodic dysphonia. I've been reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia for 35 years. So there's a different view and a different take. And let's take a listen to a young lady who had spasmodic dysphonia for 34 years and what she says on The Sally Show. You'll hear the old voice and then you'll hear the new voice and we'll move on. Jimmy James return uh, in, in a few minutes, but first, our next guest defied all the odds. She says for 34 years she didn't have a voice, and she's been working with this gentleman, Dr. Cooper, for about four weeks, and now really can talk again. Uh, Sylvia, you're going to talk, but you're going to talk the way you mm. talked for 34 years. I think it's important that we hear the difference. What happened? You were 18, and what happened? Well, I was 18 years old, and uh, I had a tonsillectomy. And after the tonsillectomy, uh, my voice got worse. I got a virus, and I got sicker and sicker. And by the time I got rid of the virus, I didn't have much of a voice. It would come and go. Sometimes it would almost be normal. But most of the time, it was never normal. Doctor, what is that called? It's called the strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. And, and what it, causes it? The talking in the lower throat. My take on it is that <clears throat> it's misuse and abuse. The medical community is saying it's an unknown cause, and they look to medical or neurological cause. And I'm reporting cures of this condition for over 25 years. <clears throat> okay. By direct she, voice rehabilitation. It's a different approach. She's such a beautiful woman, and mm. she sounds like a very old woman. Yeah, when I spoke spoke with her by phone when she called. You thought you were going to talk to somebody who's what? 120. 120. <laughs> that yeah. must be very embarrassing. I would think so. How did you find the doctor? Well, I went through 34 years of searching. Uh, I tried absolutely everything. I went to every doctor in Madison. It's like I'm talking to a different person. <laughs> you are? Oh, yeah. You are. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> So you tried everything. I'm uh -huh. sorry. And as a uh, last resort, I had tried botulism four times. And after I had the Botox treatments, my voice got worse. Uh, it got so bad that I was only able to whisper. Uh-huh. And I thought, what else? I have no recourse. And they wanted me to come back for additional Botox injections to adjust the dosage. But they'd already adjusted it three times. And it just got worse. So I decided to go with the Maverick over here, Dr. Cooper. <laughs> and I thought, what else do I have to lose? 34 years, and I had nothing to lose. She uh, is so pretty that she was in beauty pageants, but you didn't, you didn't have to speak very much, did you? Oh, yeah, I just walked on stage, and they said, hey, she looks good. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> is the author of Stop Committing Voice Suicide and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. And he says he can change anyone's voice. What do you want to ask him? Oh, I don't want to ask him anything. I'm just saying that uh, after four weeks, I I'm, my personality is back. I had become withdrawn, reclusive. I had gone to psychiatrists, acupuncturists, every kind of doctor you could think of and all of a sudden when I got my voice back it's like hey the old girl's back look out <laughs> the most common voice problem is a tired voice a misused voice it fatigues but she had no voice I told her when she called me that I believe I can help her come in and she tried everything 
her speech therapist wasn't able to help her. She heard me at a medical conference, and she referred her in. How long did it take me to find your real voice? Well, it took uh, my real voice he picked up in about... Oh, five seconds. Uh, <laughs> really? I have to somebody God. for you. Can you, uh, suppo we have somebody who would like to change her life. Her name is Kelly. Do you mm -hmm. think you could help her? If Kelly wants to change, I believe I can help almost everyone. Ah, okay. The individual has to want to change. If they find that the voice is rewarding for them, and I think she they won't wants change. to. Uh, no. Okay, no. To we're back. Work. Okay. We're in studio right now. And what's interesting about this saga about one patient, I have a number of patients who have found their normal voice all naturally by direct voice rehabilitation. All I ask of the medical community that guarantees there are no cures, and they haven't had a single cure in 135 years now, that program you're watching is nine years old. We are superimposing the new voice on the uh, old voice. It was done at that time, but we're in studio now, and it's 10 years later almost. They guarantee there are no cures. They take away hope, as Sylvia was saying. She tried four Botox shots that left her worse. Uh, she tried a number of other things, and it didn't help. And it took five seconds for me to find a real voice in a month to establish it. Let's take a listen to Sylvia talking with the old voice again. I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Subtitled today, What's Wrong <clears throat> With Your Voice? We have in studio Sylvia Cheek. She joins with me because she has a condition called the strangled voice. The strangled voice. You've heard about it before. It's when you have difficulty getting the words out and the sound isn't right. Let's hear what it's about. How long have you had this problem with the strangled voice? I've had it for 34 years. You've had it for 34 years? Yes. You're a young lady. You must have had it when you were very young. Yeah, I, I think it started when I was about 18. 18? Yes. What happened? Do you recall? Well, first of all, it was an automobile accident that caused some uh, head damage. Uh, I had a tonsillectomy. Uh, I developed a horrible virus. I was sick for about four months. And then I lost my voice. How long did the virus last? About four months. Did you notice the voice changing? Yes. And I went for speech therapy. And uh, immediately, because I wanted, uh, I was in college, was in my last year, and I wanted to get into uh, my student teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be able to do it with that. And so I consulted a speech pathologist. What did they tell you about your voice? Well, the one speech pathologist thought I was a stutterer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Did you have a stutter before? No. Did you tell him what you thought? Yeah, I did. And they said, well, we'll just work with you. And then they uh, wanted me to use vocal fries. And now I'm finding out that that's probably one of the worst. <laughs> yeah. Not the right thing to do. Vocal fries. Tell us what that is. The vocal fry is uh, taking like uh, a, a vowel sound and moving it into your lower larynx. Could you demonstrate what it is? Yeah. A, a, e, 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 I, o, u. Could you count to ten that way with that vocal fry? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where do you feel it? Just point to it. In my local. Yeah. Right here. Right. Yeah. Did it help you doing that? No, it actually made it worse. Did you tell your clinician that? 
Yeah, I did, but she told me it would get better and that I should start reading in a vocal fry. So I would uh, do a lot of my research work uh, reading in a vocal fry. And it kept getting worse. Oh, eventually I just quit going because it didn't help. Mm -hmm. Then what did you do? Well, I went back to the doctor that did my tonsillectomy. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's going on here? And uh, he wasn't sure. And he checked me for allergies and told me I had food allergies. What was the relationship between food allergies and your voice? Well, I had post-nasal drip and I couldn't get rid of the hacking cough. And he thought that might be why I had this viral type. You had a cough? Yeah. A hacking cough? Yeah. A cough is quite often related to talking in the lower throat. That's what you were doing. I wrote that in the textbook yeah. called Modern Techniques of Voice Rehabilitation, 1973. Nobody told you about it. I don't think they knew. No. Do people tell you it's hard for them to understand you? Yes, they do. What effect does this have on you, personally? And well, it makes me not want to talk to people. And it makes me more withdrawn than I normally would be. I'm rather, I think, uh, I'm rather extroverted. And I love being around people. And I grew up in a large family, so I love to talk. Mm -hmm. And I stopped talking, and I started listening. Has had a negative, severe negative impact on you? Of course it was. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a teacher, and to teach you have to talk. Mm -hmm. What did you do after they told you it's food allergy? Did you have tests? Oh, yeah. Did? Yes, I have food allergies, I do. But it didn't help. What did you do after that, for your voice? Well, I consulted, uh, well, one of the, I went to uh, my uh, general practitioner and uh, he told me that uh, it was psychiatric mm -hmm. and that I should go see a psychiatrist. So I went to see a psychiatrist. And? He didn't help me either. <laughs> <laughs> You notice when you laugh, what happens to your voice? It goes up. You've been with me one day. Yes. You came in yesterday. You're spending a month with me. Yes. You've had three, four speech pathologists work with you. Yes. Has any one of them helped you with your voice to bring it back to normalcy? Not over long term. I think uh, it improves slightly with breathing techniques. Mm -hmm but they never cleared up the problem. You've had some botulinum toxin. I'll just explain that to the audience. Botulinum toxin is the state of the art and treatment of choice in the medical community among ear, nose, and throat doctors for the strangled voice. It's called spasmodic dysphonia. It came in about 10 years ago, and it's the rage. It's called Botox. I understand it's failing all over Europe now, and I Personally, from clinical experience, find it, it fails quite often. We'll just find out from Sylvia Cheek.